Just going to move on uh, from that. Thanks again, Lax. Appreciate that. Bit depth quantization of AVC Inter 100, also a 10 bit system. Again, you're going to be light years ahead of your 8 bit competition. Fantastic. Color space, boom, 422. Art, uh, there's, your, there's the answer to your question one more time. 422 color space in AVC Inter 100. Is this, cam is this codec awesome? Anybody want to hazard a guess? Yeah. Totally awesome. <laughs> but you were close with extremely. Thanks for weighing in. <laughs> All right. The handheld record unit, again, for AVC Intra 100, AGHP G20. Basically, anything that does AVC Intra will do both 50 and 100. Um, it, it's just if you want you know, lighter bit rate and longer record times, or heavier bit rate and higher quality. All right. Finally, again, the cameras that are going to record in AVC Intra 100 are the Panasonic's Corvette, the AGHPX3000. The AGX, HPX 2000, if you get the option board. And we're going to seg now into the next uh, portion of our, of our show here, the AG HPX 300. All right? So fantastic. I'm going to set this down for a time, go like this. What's awesome about the AG HPX 300? <coughs> Can my cameras follow me this way, please? We've got a ton of cameras in the studio uh, right now. Some of them are up here. Some of them are back there. It's, uh, it's a lot to handle, but I hope my audience is sticking with me here. AGHPX 300, right? Totally awesome camera. Two P2 card slots, SDHC memory slot. We're going to get into that um, in just a second. Four channels of audio. Comes with a Fujinon 17 by HD lens. All right. The sensors, one third inch CMOS sensors. We're calling them three MOS. That's Panasonic's proprietary name for them. Interesting portion. Interesting point about these chips. Um, one of the first Panasonic cameras in this sort of smaller sized market that has full raster 1920 by 1080 chips. All right? So that means every pixel in record and playback maps directly pixel for pixel to a pixel on the chip. Um, some people find that very important. Some people it's OK when the chip size is a little smaller, there's a little algorithm in place to sort of up-res the light coming into 1920 by 1080. Some people say, absolutely not. I don't want any algorithms. I don't want any math. I want one pixel on my chip for every recorded pixel. HPX 300 satisfies those requests. Cool? What's up, Tom? Uh, we have a question from the chat room. Uh, the one billion fan, which I believe is our fans in Italy, I okay. uh, would like to know, what's the price difference between the 50 and 100 intramodel? The 50 and 100 intramodels. OK, so the price difference is 0. Why is the price difference 0? Cameras such as the HPX 300 or the AJ HPX 3000 or 2000 with the option board, they have the capacity to record in multiple codecs. Okay? One codec that they can record in, AVC Intra 100. Another codec, just a menu setting, AVC Intra 50. So no price difference between the cameras that shoot in 50 and 100. Additionally, for, all, uh, for our friends that are shooting DVC Pro HD on P2 cards. Those are our friends who have bought HPX 170s, HPX 200s, right? Or, or the 500s, any, any of a host of Panasonic P2 cameras. These cameras that are shooting in AVC Intra still have the capacity to shoot DVC Pro HD on the P2 cards. Why is that important? Maybe you spend a lot of time editing from your HPX 500 or 200, and you spend a lot of time with P2 cards and DVC Pro HD material, and you're just not ready. You're just not ready to move into the intra frame recording. Uh, the, Although DVC Pro HD also is intra frame. You're not ready to move into the, the, the new millennium, the AVC intra stuff. You still want to stick with your DVC Pro HD. No worries at all. Backwards compatible. You're going to be able to record DVC Pro HD <laughs> right on your HPX 300 cameras. We're going to pause here for a minute. I want to talk to you guys about the Dot Studio, all right? We're here in the Dot Studio, home of the Dot Video Show with Jesse Miller. Brand new lighting grid, um, one month old background. It was new last time around. It's got a couple of downfalls, one of them being a train. Every now and then a train's going to pass in the background. Uh, I'm going to trust my buddy Mike to edit that out in the future, but my, uh, my millions and millions of internet viewers that are watching us live, uh, added bonus, you got to hear the train. <laughs> All, right. All right, so getting back, getting back into our codecs and such. HBX 300 has a pretty couple of awesome hardware features. Two SDI outputs. Wes, can one of them be high definition and one of them standard definition? Uh, you can switch them both to be standard definition. Uh, otherwise, they're both going to be high definition. 
So are they independently? No. So both HD, excuse me, both SDI outputs are going to be high definition or they're going to be standard definition. No big deal. Leave your both, H, your both SDI outputs in high definition and use your handy video out connector, video output, standard definition composite. All right, your jib guys are going to love you for that because most of them haven't bought HD monitors yet. So you stick this on the end of a jib, run a composite cable to the jib monitor, your HD SDI cables back to the set, and you're all ready to go. Now, there are some jib guys that, I, uh, that was mean. There are some jib guys a, that have HD There's a monitors. ghost in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> that was uh, the ghost of a jib guy that upgraded to HD and was really upset with me. All right. Couple more, cu couple more features here, and then we're going to get rid of this camera. We're going to send it off to uh, stage left. Gen lock input, <laughs> time code in and out. What does that, what does that say? Multi-camera operation. Okay. You can sync a bunch of these guys up and have no problem on your switcher because they're gen lockable. You can send time code in to match your time code up around the, all the cameras. You can send your time code out, meaning that one of these cameras can be your master, setting the time code out to all the other guys. Beautiful stuff. Handy audio output here. It's RCA, but it's channels one and two. Pretty, pretty nifty. Also on the, uh, also on the multi-camera theme, remote paint box input. So an engineer, engineer can remotely control your iris and colorimetry. This is a big one. This is very important. You don't want your cameras not to match. All right. Finally, uh, this, is a, this is a decision that I'm very pleased with by Panasonic. Look at what battery I've got on here. This is an Anton Bauer battery, your standard gold mount. Okay. This is not a special option. You did not pay any extra for this. The AGHPX300 out of the box, Panasonic put an Anton Bauer battery adapter plate on the back of the camera. That's phenomenal. Wes, how, how long am I going to run this for on a Dionic 90? Uh, the Dionic 90 will go about four hours, I believe, with, four this, hours with this camera because of the CMOS. West car. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it's fully charged, new battery. OK, all right. <laughs> cool. So um, there's even a USB 2.0 slot out of this camera. Now, I'm going to guess that's for host and device mode. Correct. All right. Again, you can use this camera, FireWire or USB 2.0, to come out to your computer for capturing. or directly to a hard drive, no computer in the middle. All right. As long as you've got a properly partitioned hard drive, you're going to be able to communicate directly to the hard drive, no laptop in the middle necessary. Totally awesome. 